house, you guys do the consultation, you get approved, you show them a house, then you write an offer, right? So when you write an offer, that's uh, <coughs> the, the, the offer screen there, you see Desiree. Desiree, <laughs> how do you make an offer to be accepted? What is your acceptance rate and how do you get an offer accepted? Well, our team, we are very methodical in the way that we go about getting a buyer's offer accepted because it's not just about you as the buyer and, you know, the money that you can bring to the table and putting your best foot forward financially. It's really about building that relationship with the listing agent, finding out the details and what the seller really needs because, Although most of the time it's money, sometimes it's a quick close and sometimes it's, you know, more competitive contingency periods, which we'll cover later. But um, it's our job to really create the full package to deliver to those sellers and get your offer accepted as, you know, the best feeling in the whole world when we get to tell you that you got your offer accepted. There's a few things that we do to ensure that that happens aside from just creating that relationship, but we definitely work on uh whatever's comfortable with you, but being very competitive with all of our contingency periods. We work with amazing inspectors who can get in there uh, within, you know, two days of us calling and getting our offer accepted to get your inspection done. So we can strip down those periods. Uh, our lender Ryan is amazing at getting our appraisers ordered and in and out of there as soon as possible. So we can really strip down those contingency periods for you as well. And then he's there on the side of the, our loan contingency. And that's very important to know that there's a lot of strength and power, uh, your buying power with that. And, you know, having a full complete approval while you're going into escrow so that we can really strip it down and make it a quick and easy close for all parties. Um, that's primarily it. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say um, to a lot of our uh, buyers that we are very, very well equipped IT uh, related. Um, so we do, as, as everyone can see right now, we're doing Zoom consultations. We do virtual tours. Uh, we have DocuSign. So um, most of the process, if you do not want to be exposed to the COVID or you're um, not no local, we're definitely here uh, to make an exceptional experience uh, in person. But as I said, in, in today's day, we're also very well equipped uh, to do a lot of things um, online with uh, our uh, exceptional IT team and our uh, resources and tools. So uh, I just want to take that fear away and, and say that that is definitely an option on our end as well. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. I'm going to share with you really quick. Uh, uh, so what we're talking about to make it a little simple uh, for all the viewers here. So as we just spoke, Desiree is going to put the offer together. Then the buyer comes in and we get a phone call, we get approved with Ryan. Uh, with the lender, then we do a buyer consultation. After the consultation, we go out, we see the properties, we write an offer, right? We write an offer, that's where we explain a little bit of uh, how to get an offer accepted. Then we get into what's called the, the escrow process. Is that right? So we broke it down. You can see here, can you guys see it on the screen? So there are like 10 steps of the escrow process. Now, um, you know, the, the first step is Javier, when we talk about you get an offer accepted, we'll talk about getting the earnest money deposit, the EMD, right? Correct. What do you recommend so the, the EMD is going to be? Yeah, so the first step in um, after you get your offer accepted or even prior to getting your offer accepted, um, you know, you want to find out the needs and wants of the seller and try to cater to, to those. That way you can kind of give them exactly what they want. If they need some extra time to move out, you want to, you know, put in the offer that they are allowed to, you know, we close in 30 days and they can rent back for two weeks if they need to. You just want to cater it to what their needs are. That way it makes it easy for them and they don't have to keep asking you for, for more. But once your offer is accepted, you do have your EMD, your earnest money deposit. And I recommend, depending on the offer, if there's multiple offers, um, you want to pay, you want to put a deposit of 1% all the way up to 3%. The more you can put, the better, the better, the higher the deposit is, the more attractive the offer is going to be. So the first step in, after you get the offer accepted is paying the, the earnest money deposit. So anywhere from one to 3%. So you can calculate that just depending on the, on the purchase price. That's due pretty much right away. They give you up to 72 hours to pay it, but the sooner that you can get it in the better, because sometimes depending on your bank, it may take a day for the transfer to go through. So that is the first step is getting the deposit paid. 
Um, that way you're pretty much locked in. That is refundable um, throughout the escrow process. So it's not like you pay the, the deposit and you lose it or it, it's in danger. Um, the earnest deposit simply stays with, an, with escrow and an escrow account. Um, and let's say, for example, throughout the escrow process, you have your due diligence that you're going to do. You have your inspection, you have the appraisal, you have the termite inspection, you have disclosures or several things that have to happen throughout the escrow process. So if at any point um, there is something that comes up in the inspection, uh, your deposit is completely refundable. Um, so that's, that would be the first step in the escrow process. Right, perfect. So on step number two, we put a meet with your lender. The reason we put it in there is because as Ryan uh, told you at the beginning, he's able to uh, pre-approve you, uh, you know, pre-approve it without getting all the from all the uh, paperwork that's necessary to move forward with the loan. The reason he does that is because it's such a competitive market, so he's able to give a pre-approval letter, so you can move on and write an offer. But then once things get real, meaning that you get an offer accepted, at that point, Ryan needs all the information. So, um, Ryan, what are the most important documents that you just, just give us a, a quick list? Um, I would say give me the last two pay stubs, uh, your last two W-2s, proof of wherever the down payment's coming from. Boom. That's pretty much it as far as the documents. The rest of it we can, we can grab or, and verbally go over with you when we're taking the application. Awesome. Perfect. So that's great. After that, we're going to order the inspection. So Desiree, um, I know you have a thing about the inspection. How you explain to your clients, you know, when they're getting into a resale home, not a brand new home. Tell us a little bit about the inspection, what, what to expect and how to overcome any uh, issues. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's give a shout out to a better home inspection and Don Danny Forrester. Their team's amazing with getting the job done the right way. And, um, catering to the clients and getting in there as quick as possible and getting you your inspection report immediately upon completion of the inspection. That again, helps us be super competitive with that inspection contingency because we know we can make it happen. Um, so something to understand when going into the home inspection period, um, every home in California is sold absolutely as is. So the seller is not warranted to do anything at all, give you any credit um, or do any repairs for the home. Um, but it is a great negotiating point within our contract period to either get you a credit back towards your purchase or to uh, have those repairs actually taken care of before the close of escrow. Um, so it's a negotiating point, like I said, uh, to negotiate with the seller and agree on whether it's a financial credit or repairs to be done. Right. But sometimes a seller, depending on uh, what they want from the sale, will or will not take care of that. That is why I also like to say go in strong um, on your initial offer because it will give you a lot more wiggle room once it's time to negotiate for those repairs. Great call on that.